Got some past exam questions here for electron structure. So if you want to have a go, the link to the questions is in the description. So download them, have a go, and then watch the video for the answers. Okay, so first question, a bromine atom, well, we've got the periodic table, we see that it's got 35 electrons, so we just fill up accordingly. Okay, so there it is there, and you can put these either way around. Okay, so I've put them in order of shell, so all the third shell electrons together, then the fourth shell, but you can write them in order of filling, so after 3P, 4S2, and then 3D10, 4P5, either way is fine. Question two now, electron configuration for an Mg2 plus ion. Well, that's got 10 electrons. The atom's got 12, but it's lost two electrons to go to the two plus ion. So it's B. Question three, state in words a 3D shape of an S orbital and a P orbital. Well, an S orbital is spherical. And the P orbital, well, it looks like that. So... You could either say lobe shaped, but I tend to say dumbbell shape. Next part of question two, you can see I've already drawn up the electron configuration in the electrons in boxes format for nitrogen. And the good thing about that is you've got the energy kind of um, ladder. So you can see how the subshell energies compare with each other. So we're asked to compare the relative energies, so compared to each other, of the 2s orbital and each of those three p orbitals. So basically you just need to say something like the 2s orbital is the lowest in energy, then 2p, but you would also need to say that the three 2p orbitals that make up the subshell all have the same energy as each other. Question 4 is about ytterbium with a quite a high atomic number of 70. So it's way past the um, number 36, which is kind of where A-level goes up to in terms of right and electron configurations. So how many electrons would there be in the fourth shell of a terbium? Well, it's obviously going to be full. So the answer is 32. They're basically just asking you how many electrons can you fit in the fourth shell. So a terbium's going to have 32 electrons in there. How many orbitals are there in the third shell of a terbium? Well, the third shell consists of the, the 3s subshell, the 3p subshell, and the 3d subshell. And in terms of orbitals, there's one orbital in the 3s subshell, there's three in the 3p subshell, and there's five in the 3d subshell. So add them together and you get nine. So there's nine orbitals there. Question five is about antimony, atomic number 51. So you've got to find where it is in the periodic table and you'll see it's in period five and it's in the P block. Question six, typical question this and catches a lot of people out, especially the first one. So a 2P orbital, the focus there is the word orbital. Doesn't matter what kind of orbital you've got, maximum number of electrons is always two. Common wrong answer there would be six because I think students just think P Subshell 6. Okay, so but it's the orbital, so it's 2. The 3s subshell, well, the s subshell is only made from one orbital, so that's 2 as well. The fourth shell, we kind of already had that with that um, ytterbium question, 32. Question 7 complete the electron configuration for the nitride ion, so that's the N3 minus ion. So it's got 10 electrons. The atom of nitrogen's got 7 electrons, so it's gained 3 electrons. So it's going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Question 8a, which two subshells are filled after 4s? So after, straight after 4s is 3d, and then it goes to 4p. Part b, they just want the definition for orbital. So that's a region of space in an atom, which can hold up to two electrons with opposite spin. Next part, the total number of electrons occupying the p orbitals of a chlorine atom. So there's the electron configuration there. So we've got p6 and p5. So it's 11. How many electrons are in one ion of calcium 2 plus? Well, calcium, the atom, has got 20 electrons. And so the 2 plus ion is going to have 18. It's lost two electrons. 
First part of 9a, so the atomic number is the number of protons. The full electron configuration for a titanium atom, so it's 22 electrons in the atom. So there it is then, just what I said before, these can be either way around. So again, I've just put all the, th the third shell electrons together there. The fourth period is potassium to krypton, so the seventh element in that period is manganese, and that's in block D. Question 10, so sulphur, an atom of sulphur's got 16 electrons, so there's its electron structure there. And we'll use what we've got for the first part to answer the second part. How many full orbitals are there in an atom of sulphur? So there's one there, there's another full orbital there, there's three full orbitals there, there's one there, and then if we just think about that P4, there's boxes, so you've got half filled and then pair up. So we've got one full orbital there then. So that's one, two, five, six, seven. Next question, gallium's got 31 electrons and so there is its electron configuration and again, either way around for those two. So we've got to use Mendeleev's prediction to suggest the empirical formula of gallium fluoride. So gallium is in group three, just like aluminium, so it will form a Ga3 plus ion. The fluoride ion is one minus, so it's going to be GaF3. Question 12, which element has atoms with the greatest number of singly occupied orbitals? So I've gone, for, I've gone for the outer configuration, and then I've expressed it in the electrons in boxes format. So everything before this subshell and this one and so on is all full, so they're all paired. Um, so you can see carbon's got two singly occupied orbitals, um, chlorine's got one, calcium doesn't have any because it's S2, and gallium has one as well, so it's P1. So the answer was A, carbon. And the final question, electron configuration of element X is that. So because it's P4, it's going to gain two electrons and form an X2 minus ion. So when you react that with sodium, which we know forms a 1 plus ion, we're going to need two sodium ions for every X2 minus ion. So it'll be Na2X and therefore Option C.